Hi, thank you for joining me for another video. I'm sitting in my yard today, actually. <laughs> um, the video that you're about to watch, I want you to have a look at it and see if you can see the mistakes that I've made. Um, there were several pretty big ones, some of them small, but uh, you'll see why at the end of the video, because it was a close one, it was a rough one. So let's roll the intro and see you in a minute. Oh, getting in here was no joke, man. There's like three feet of snow. I got this haul it to my thing near my butt. Holy cow. Tonight is going to be one of the coldest nights of the year. And I am at about 8,000 feet elevation down in the valleys. It's supposed to be seven degrees. I'm not kidding, man. That was, that was rough going getting in here. Now look at this. This is under the pine tree. We got to, you know, four or five inches. Move out here. It's a little worse. Deeper. Lucky I didn't go in here. <clears throat> Tried to go the easiest way, but getting through that, though, that was something else. Anyway, this is how much snow there is here under the pine. Might use that as a seat. That was probably soaking wet. But these two sturdy pines, this one and this one, should do the trick. Break some of the branches off. First things first, though. I'll tell you what this is. Um, tried to do it last camp out and severed a tendon and a ligament. Had to climb out of there. Haven't been able to use this finger much more than that for. God, I did it on Black Friday. So I put the glove over there. I'll show you what I did. But we're doing things one-handed, which is slower, much slower than filming. It's also slower, so I gotta get moving. Gotta get my shelter, first of all. And, uh, what is that? What do we got here? Besides a shaky cameraman. Who knows? Anyway, tree's got plenty of dry wood on it, so uh, break some of that off. Clear out some of this mess, dead undergrowth here, like this guy and get this shelter up. Hammock. <laughs> Doing hammock, camping, in the middle of winter. See you soon. All right, boys and girls, let's chat for just one minute. It's, uh, actually, I don't know what time it is. The sun's gone down. I can see it up on the peaks there, just off in the distance up there. I don't know if you can see the glimmer and light up off the peak way. Anyway, a bit of light left, maybe a couple hours. It is, can you see that? Six degrees. <laughs> 
I've got a little sensor sitting off over here away from the camp and I got this one, the bottom corner there, if you can see that eight degrees, is where the main sensor sits. So we got two temperatures. It's going into my hammock with me and, um, oh, it's 408. So we got two hours of light left. So I'm gonna create an upside down fire, I think, just so I don't have to constantly feed it. That way the, the kindling will burn small on the top, medium and large, like a pyramid. And, uh, I gotta go out and find some firewood. Fire's going there, it's six degrees. I'm freezing, so I got everything set up. And uh, let's get a fire going and cook some food and uh, story time, right? Talk to you soon. All right. Temperature quickly dropping, and because of my hand here, I'm dropping the. I mean, it's dropping quick. We're at four degrees right now, so I'm going to just start building this fire. Let me show what you got right here. I've got just a pile of of big logs and little logs and everything. Because I'm running out of time, I'm not gonna go gather a whole bunch of bigger logs like this one. Um, we're just gonna go with what we got until we got a pile here so it goes down into the ground and gives us a bed of embers through the snow. It's only about an inch of ice underneath here, two inches maybe. And now I'm gonna, it's freezing out here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab me some, uh, get my kin my tinder kit and uh, light up the fire, put it right here on top, and feed it, get something going, get a nice good blaze going, and uh, I'll see you in just a minute. That's what I've done. i got a handful of twigs, dryer lint, underneath, and some sap in the middle, if you can see that guy right there. This should work very well. I'm going to continue to get some more tiny twigs, like what's stuck up on here, and stick them in my hand, but I can't do it <laughs> with... Uh, one hand, so get some more dryer lint in there and some more sap and make ourselves a little bundle, a torch of awesomeness. That way we only have to strike it and light it once. Well, let's get to it's getting really cold. All right, this is what we got. So I just cut on the finger. Dryer lint and sap all up in there and little twigs. I'm gonna set this down just like it is if I can get it off my glove and throw a spark into here and voila, we'll have a tiny fire and then I can put the smaller twigs. Focus on that rat pile right there. I can stick that all on the top of it with my little bark and pine sap and we're good to go. I hope. <laughs> so let's see what happens, huh? Now, I can't use my right hand. Obviously, it's wrapped up in this wire brace gadget, so I'm gonna do it with my left, attempt to do it with my left. And, uh, well, this is gonna be interesting, that's for sure. Um, how to do this? Like this, maybe? Can I hold this thing, even? I did... No, I can't. At least not with the cord yanking on me. Um, poo. I don't have a good edge on my knife. All right, I'm gonna try it right-handed. It's a softer thing, but ouch! That burned the glove, not the. Ugh, I can't even grip it with this brace on. Can't take it off either. I've done a one-handed fire challenge, but this is a little different. I can't get. Uh, maybe if I. Get in there with my knee. Be very gentle. Very, very gentle. I can get this whole thing and move it closer to me without losing it all. Physical therapist, if he watches this, is gonna freak out. Can't use that finger. All right, hold it steady with those fingers. close. My wrist has no strength. This cord keeps pulling on things. This is how you do it, guys. Just too cold. Not close enough to the thing.
there it is. Oh yeah. Oh no 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 she went out. Twigs are in the way. Dang it, son of a biscuit. I need to move that. There we go. I have some air in there, but I had it, 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 I had it. Okay, back to the pain. Back to the pain. I do have a longer rod. But it's harder steel, so it's gonna be more difficult to strike. Let's put that in the palm again. There again, I oh, think cord is in the way. There's more fire. Smothered it. Way to go, genius. About to cut this lanyard off. Can't do it on the finger. There it's. There we go. There's it. There's it coming up. Get it up. Get it up. Get it up. Sticks move. Son of a biscuit. Alright, change of plans. Bigger stick, smaller striker. Bigger steel, smaller striker. We're going with a bigger stick. Let's see if I can hold this in my brace while I attempt to strike it. Holding all this jizzled out of the way. Got it. Don't celebrate yet. Don't breathe on it either. Alright. We are not out of the woods yet, but we're getting close. Something going on here. Not out of the woods yet, but it's it's somewhat stable down there. The problem is, is we got a lot of moisture in some of these sticks. Fighting the cold, dude. Dang, it is 
taken the work to get this thing going. I think it's just so cold and so wet. All right, let's uh, do something to keep this going. I'll be right. All right, we got the fire going, and uh, it is measuring. I can get this over here. Two degrees out there, one degree over here. It's cold, so keep that right where it's at, and uh, I'm gonna sit by this fire and keep feeding it. And then uh, once we get some decent coals, I'll cook my food. It's freezing the food. It's literally freezing. Um, yeah, it happens at two degrees. Anyway, hopefully we'll get some better embers, even though I've got two inches of snow <laughs> underneath my fire. We'll see. i got plenty of wood, so let's get to it. <sighs> I sit by this fire while it gets going. I'm going to talk to you a little bit. Um, yeah, this. How about that, huh? That was uh, a slip of a knife, and it sliced through a tendon and a ligament in my hand. Really uh, did a number on me. Um, that happened Black Friday. I was doing an overnighter, and I hit the top of a piece of wood with my left hand, grabbed the base of my right hand, and I went to bounce the whole thing, just kind of get that knife further in there and I thought that knife was fairly secure but I bounced it and it came up out of the wood and came right down on my hand. Sliced right through a glove and uh, right through a, I knew it hit the tendon because I went to, I could look in the cut and see my, my joint and everything. I tried to bend my finger and I felt it like somebody thumped me and I knew right then that I had torn a, a, a ligament. But I didn't know about, or a tendon, one of the two, I, I cut through two. The one on the side of my finger here that keeps your finger straight and the other one on the top that makes it lift like that. So I packed up what I could, got my most expensive things out and told my wife to meet me at the hospital and a week later I had surgery and that's, yeah I got this from the physical therapist. It's uh, quite the contraption, it's meant to keep those three fingers, that one, that one and that one steady or steel so that's the purpose of that, and uh, hopefully uh, it heals well. It's doing all right, but uh, this is the first time I've dared gone out, go out, dared, dared go out, yeah, dared go out. But uh, that's not the only thing. My balance and coordination all the way back to summer have been off, and um, I started going numb at the feet, like my toes creeped up, hit my knees. I went to the hospital. Short, long story short got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Kind of a shocker if you've never been diagnosed with a, a terminal disease, not terminal, but a lifelong, it's going to be with you the rest of your life type disease. And the diabetics is what I'm talking about, but um, it takes it out of you. I, I didn't want to do anything. I thought my life was over, you know. But, uh, yeah, it affected my balance, affected my coordination pine sap in my beard. So I missed a log and hit my foot with an axe. That took me out for a couple weeks and then I did this and spent a whole month at this. But um, tough stuff man. It's it's not easy to deal with these kind of things. My my sympathy and, and heart goes out to those that do it all the time. So that's why I haven't been posting videos regularly. I, you, I like to do twice a month or if not once a week it really but full-time job, full-time dad, it gets busy, so you do what you can, right? You do what you can. Anyway, so that's uh, that's this. So today, first time out in a long time. I'm very excited. I'm glad you're with me, and uh, I haven't been this cold before. It's, I've been to the teens and the single digits a bunch of times, but never down to uh, to the negatives. I think we'll hit negative 10, negative 15, and we'll find out in the morning, but I'm going to tend to my fire and get some food in me, but yeah, love your faces and thank you so much for your support and for watching us. I think we got ourselves a good bed of coals here. Got my water bottle next to it so I can, uh, uh, so it won't freeze. Cause that's my tea. That's my drink right here. 
Speaking of which, I need to get this open. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? Oh, good enough. That's cold, though. This is my food. I think it's time to cook that that thing. <laughs> the thing. I got a good set of embers here. Let's continue to put stuff back up on top. It falls over. I think we got. Oh yeah, we got holes down there. It's melted through the ice and burnt through the ice. What do you want to call it? And uh, we got some coals right on the ground. You can see down in there happening. Good. Good. That's good. And right behind you is a bunch of firewood that I've collected. It'll, it'll last me today and then it's got some smaller stuff that I'll be using tomorrow. So, we won't be cold. I refuse to be cold. Except my butt might be cold. It's a healthy zero degrees right now. And uh, I'm sure it'll get colder. Over here next to the fire, it's outside about five feet of five degrees. Um, I guess you could call this a show us your steak challenge. But my steak is a goose. <laughs> Haven't had goose on a fire yet, so we'll see what that tastes like. Oh man, it's a uh, fire is pretty hot. See if you can see this, but the snow over here is melting, and all these little things are pointing to the fire. But we got a nice warm fire, so what I'm gonna do right now is cook some food because I'm hungry. So let's do that. We got a nice bed of coals, got some burning going on still. I'm gonna move some stuff around with my gloves, and uh. Got my grill, I'm gonna set this out on here and do that. Put these two close together like that. That'll work. Can't really see it, but uh loose steak in there. Does that help? Yay nay. Not really. <laughs> Not really. Let's just cook it. There she is. There she goes. And uh, I'll let her cook. I really should have had my headlamp with me, but I'm going to have to use this instead. Goose, ladies and gents, goose. Let's see if you can get any focus on this thing here. Here it is. A juicy slice of goose meat. <laughs> that is actually really good. I'm exceptionally pleased with that. That is really good juice. Typically you bake it. That's the only way I've done it before. And never like this. Bake the juice. And then uh, you eat it like a turkey. fire gets down to like this and it's all smoke. It drives me bonkers. I'm gonna have to fix this. It's, it's 
stupid. As long as I don't go moving that finger. That's supposed to keep it from going down, which doesn't want to do that with his glove anyway. So, yeah, that was, that was dumb. Yeah, you live and you learn, right? What do we got here? Let's have a look. Yeah, negative one. So, and then 2.4 near the fire. I could leave this thing, this sensor right here and see what it is right by the fire. I'm sure it's a lot warmer. We got a boil. Got a breathe tea because I've had a cold the last few days and then one that has chamomile so it should help me sleep tonight. A little bit of sugar. There. Just wait for the turkey to finish, or the goose to finish, and we'll be goody for dinner. Hey guys, it's uh, 7 o'clock. The goose, <laughs> it needs to be baked or broiled. It, it swelled right up, which I should have expected since, well, that's what most meat does when it gets hot. But It wasn't a win. It had good flavor. But uh, I literally was burning it, getting it cooked. So if I'm going to do this again, I'm going to have to put it in some kind of a, a pot and uh, cook it cook it a little bit better. So, But that uh, no not matter. This has been nice. It's been quite relaxing. It's been it's cold. Temperature check here. By the fire, we are sitting at 24. You see this? Ouch. Uh, 24, 25 degrees by the fire, and uh, well, it's still negative 1.4 out at the sensor, which is probably 15 yards away. It's not not a big deal, not out there very far, but anyway, I am out of wood. I think I'll collect another bundle, and uh, I'll sit by the fire and relax, you know. It's just good to be out here. Anyway, love your faces. We'll see you in a bit. Uh, <clears throat> the voice is all scratchy. I'm in my cocoon, but my butt feels cold. That's not good. We'll see how that goes over the next hour or so. It's nine o'clock, temperature outside, negative six. In here, it says 53, but it's been in my pocket, so it'll change, but 7 a.m. It should be the lowest, which is about the time we'll get up and get breakfast going, get packing, and hit the road, but thank you for joining me, and uh, tired, I think I'll, I think I'll go to bed, well, I'm in bed, it took me like 20 minutes to get in here, but see how it goes. Yeah, um, gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Love your faces. See you in the morning. I hope if I don't get eaten by something. Oh, I don't know what time it is, but I'm just starting to fall asleep, and then nature calls. And then I've got an issue here <clears throat> where my tail end of my hammock is is too frozen mustache. The tail end of my hammock is the foot end, rather is. Too low so I'm sliding down my feet are past my underquilt which makes for a very uncomfortable sleep especially considering it's now where is the, the I don't know where the thermometer is but it's cold certainly um, when I went to bed it was negative seven so it's at least that put my frozen boots on and stumble over into the darkness to fix the mess. Oh, the joys of him again. I should have used a way to test before you get in. Anyway, see you in a bit. Gordon, can you see me? I, uh, 
don't know if you can see this very well. Let's turn on a light here. Uh, so, <clears throat> I tried recording this about four times, but because of the temperature, my GoPro wouldn't turn on. Turns out negative 20 is the limit. Um, and I'm not prepared for negative 20, so part of all this survival and learning and growing type thing that we're doing here is um, knowing when to call it quits. And I reached the call it quits point just about a half hour ago when I was just shivering and freezing with feet numb in bed and just couldn't stay warm. Anyway, so I stoked up a fire here and uh, warming up, I'm going to pack up and head out. It's Right now it's 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, somewhere there. It's time, it's, it's far too cold. I'm going to pack up and I hit the road and I'll see you in, uh, when I get to the truck. It shouldn't be long. Um, it's probably going to take an hour to get there, pack up, walk out, hike out, that thing. So it's an easy, well-trodden trail, rail tra well-traveled trail. So I just head over to that and follow the, the quickest path. So I will see you boys on the flip side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll do, we'll finish this off at home. Cheers. We live back at the truck. Just want to quickly say, made it. <laughs> 6 a.m. It says negative 16 right now. Um, I'm gonna head home. We'll finish this up there. My battery says really low, but it has more to do with the fact that this thing is freezing cold than anything. But anyway, mistakes were made, and uh, in survival situations, you gotta know when to pull out. You gotta know when to get out of there. You gotta know when to go do something else. Um, I think I hit my point. We will, uh, we're gonna try again. <laughs> I'm just gonna go home, rest up, and uh, yeah, love your faces, and thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Bye. Now that you've watched that, let's talk about the mistakes, at least that I noticed that I made after reviewing the material once I got home and warmed up. Um, mistake number one, I think this was probably the biggest, was that I severely underestimated the weather. Um, considering it to be about 10 degrees cooler, which I think was is accurate still, but seven in the valley should have meant negative three up there. I even planned for negative 10, but uh, my LCD froze, my cameras froze, everything froze, and I literally, I tried to make in that last blip video there, and it wouldn't record anymore. I couldn't even turn my GoPro on. It got down to, I think the last temperature I'd noticed was about negative 20, uh, which is some seriously cold weather for here in the Utah. When I got back to my vehicle, it was a ghost town. The parking lot, nobody was out. It was incredible. Of course, it was three, five o'clock in the morning, I think, when I finally got out of there. Started at two. Anyway, so mistake number one was that I had air going underneath my hammock. I had to pitch that A-frame up um, too, too high above the ground, which meant my ridge line was too high as well. So if I had dropped everything down to the top level of that hammock, or at least did an, an uneven A-frame where you've got one that goes right down to the ground and puts snow so nothing gets under that, and then you got kind of a porch hanging over. Should have done that since there was no threat of, of rain coming down on me or anything. Um, second big mistake, I went to bed wet. Not really wet, but just wet enough. And by putting foot warmers in my socks, it precipitated and helped evaporate that water into my surrounding sleeping bag. Now with a synthetic bag, it's not that bad. At negative 20 and a zero degree bag, mistake number three, we'll talk about that in a second, it was a big mistake. Um, having slightly wet pants, I should have just stripped my socks, my pants, and wore something else or nothing else, in fact, and gone to bed that way. It'd have been warmer. Um, number three, as I just mentioned, my I didn't carry my wool blanket with me. I thought extra weight, I'm going in a mile or two, I don't want that extra weight on me. So I didn't carry that, I could have thrown that on me, I could have taken this jacket off and wrapped it around my feet, uh, and that could have helped as well. Uh, mistake number, we'll call that well, three, we'll call number mistake number four. Um, my foot end of my hammock was on a downhill. I tried to fix that, I got up in the middle of the night, I mean you can see in the time lapse that it's quite a bit of a downhill, something like something like <clears throat> this. Um, when it should have been, uh, I usually like it higher and then pull my under quilt toward my head end. So my literally mid calf down, not protected by the under quilt. So 
I should have fixed that. Now the other mistake that I made in conjunction with that is I had that one big tree on the other end and that tiny little leader, tiny little bit of strap going off to my hammock, that did not have hardly any give to it. But on the other side of that little tree, that long piece, it did have give. So even when I got out to fix that mess at one o'clock in the morning, it still slanted me that way just because it pulled further on that side and in the head end side. Uh, so I could have fixed that. If I'd even looked at it, looked at the footage before I went out, I would have been like, ah, crap. Um, now, the reason I didn't fix my ridge line height was because everything was all tied together. Once I got that tanned, everything, or the, the tarp in, I had it wrapped up and tied to my ridge line, and that was tied, and it was just a conjumbled mess. And it, it literally took me, I left, I packed up at 2.30 in the morning, because when I got up, made that, tried to make that last video. Um, I didn't get home until 7 o'clock, 6.30. So, and it took me probably 40 minutes to an hour to get back to my car. Um, and then I sat there for a half hour, so yeah, it took me three-ish hours um, to get everything untied and packed up. A long time. Well, of course, I'm one-handed. I broke my brace. That was another bad, stupid mistake. I realized I didn't break it. I melted it. When I'm cold, I had that fire, like, close. Like, I was, like, straddling that fire, and it, it melted my brace. So that was another mistake. So those were some really big mistakes that I made that I'm going to rectify. My next trip up there, I'm going to plan a little better. I've got down to single digits with a with two 30 degree under quilts. Uh, that should have been close to zero. There's a chart online. I'll put a link in the description if I find it. Remember to. But that's that's it. Should have been it shouldn't have been that hard. I I remember getting home and I didn't warm up for two three hours. I was. I had, I had like spots everywhere, which is weird. Um, my fingertips were, were blue for, blue-ish for several, uh, several hours. I got in a hot bath and... Uh, chit chat. In the... Chitty chitty chat chat. In... Chat chat chat. It was, tell you what man, it was rough. I should have prepared that a lot better and I just neglected to. Um, preparation. Preparation and planning. That was the most important step that I, that I missed. Uh, I should have planned for my food freezing. I should have planned for, um, I should have put my setup right, should have done it right. I've done this before, and my first video, the one exactly from last year, same area, it got down easily, I think that was my coldest point, eight, nine degrees, and I was fine. I didn't feel cold at all, I slept like a baby. I got up and I peeled back that sleeping bag and was like, whoa, it's cold out here, and that's, that's typically how I like to do things, but mistakes were made, we're gonna fix them. And move on. And what can you do? You learn from it. You move on. Which is um, documenting it. And I'm not afraid. I'm going to put this up online so people know that I do make mistakes. It happens. Fortunately for me, I was prepared well enough, even with a bad preparation, that I knew how to get out of there. And I knew how to keep myself alive. Uh, even, even with negative 20-ish, even 15. If it was negative 15, I still would have been uncomfortable. But I tell you, there's a huge difference between negative 3 to negative 10. Even a negative 10 to negative 20, that's a pretty big difference. Um, so, love you faces. Thanks so much for joining me. If you haven't already, hit the sub button, slap a like, and then we'll see you on the next adventure. Bye.